Hello, and welcome to Kicking and Crocs, the podcast, where we talk about martial arts stuff, geeky stuff, and all sorts of stuff. My name is Steve, one half of Kicking and Crocs. Dave, the other half of Kicking and Crocs. Still Nick, no Crocs. <laughs> We're going to rectify that eventually, though. So, um, I'm going to be honest. We don't have a lot to talk about tonight. Speak for yourself, sir. Okay. I got some things to talk about. <laughs> okay, then. Well, then. <laughs> I give it away to the wonderful Master Dave. No, I just, I got, I got a story from earlier today where, where, um... We love all the, stories. All the gracefulness of being a martial artist just went out the window. There was no grace. I was, um, yeah, it was, it was bad. So I had my annual, it's January, I had my annual checkup, checkup at my health. It's all good. All good martial artists and croc wearers should to make sure they're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> the croc wearers. Yes, croc wearers. <laughs> Okay, anyways. Yeah, all good martial arts and croc wearers. Healthy enough to sport the crocs. Got that's it. right. That's what I'm saying. So... I go, I go, the way my doctor works is you go in for your physical, right? You got to do the, the uh, blood work right there. They have like a lab core right in his office. So you, you sit in the waiting room, then you go to his thing, and then you go to the, the office. So, so I hate needles. I hate them. Terrible. I'd rather get kicked in the head than take a needle. I don't, I don't like it. You slightly dislike them. I can't watch them on TV. <laughs> Just the idea of a needle entering my body, I don't like it. So... <laughs> So I had a really bad experience the last time, like last year. The girl like rolled my vein and she's like, oh, it's because you're dehydrated. So I've been pounding water for like the last two days knowing I'm going to get this blood drawn. <laughs> and I would love to hear what the reason is this time. Oh, you're overhydrated. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what? Like they take the urine sample and like I filled the cup and then I'm like, oh no, I got to keep going. And <laughs> the doctor already offended me too because he's like, oh, you've gained some weight. I'm like, ooh. What'd you say? I <laughs> like, see it what? in your cheeks. Uh, I mean, admittedly, I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I mean, I'm wearing this hoodie, a coat over it, my shoes. Like, I'm unloaded together. But anyway, let me get back to my story. So, they set me up for the blood. They're like, all right, you got to go get the blood work. I'm like, I don't like needles. I tell the girl. She set me up. I was like, I really don't like needles. And the last girl kind of messed me up. And she's like, oh, you'll be fine. Like, you'll be fine. I'm like, oh, I'm not so sure. So, will I, though? Will I be fine? She starts it off. She's like, what arm do you want? I was like, I guess, you know, you pick. And she says, we're going to go to the left. She goes, oh, I see why it rolled. The vein rolls right across the muscle. No problem. I got you. And she did a fantastic job. I barely felt anything. I was like, oh, way to go. Awesome work. So as she takes the needle out, she's putting the vials away. She's entering stuff into the computer. She's like... I was like, thank you so much. That's the best, that's the best blood drawn I have ever had. Hey, congratulations. Like... And she's like, all right, thank you so much, and then you're good to go. I'm like, awesome. So I picked my coat up to put it back on, and I swing it like I'm going to put it on, and it, it hits a, a container of, like, 18 vials, knocked them all over the floor, spewed all across her floor, 18 vials. They, opened. Of, they, they did opened. not. They didn't break. But I knocked, they're in like, you know, they have the little thing where it's all like yeah. contained, like like numbered and ordered. They look like they were labeled. But um, like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. Uh, boom. And I knock boom. them all down. And I'm like, oh my God, I am so sorry. And she's like real deadpan. She's you like, just ruined that nurse's whole life. Oh my God. <laughs> real <laughs> scene from Resident Evil. So, it's real, just like, <laughs> so real deadpan. She's like, it's all right. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Uh, did I just did I just mess everything up for you? She's like, it's fine. It's okay. Please leave. <laughs> That's exactly what she and was then, like, like, I'm caught like, I don't want to like, hear this guy ever again. I'm caught in the like, because I wanted to help and pick him up, but then like, it's containers of blood. I'm like, I, I can't touch these. What do I do? And I'm like, uh, so I'm like slowly backing out of the office. <laughs> I literally knocked 18 miles of blood down on this lady. This is a comedy show, Gold. You see him like kick it on the way up by an accent, like not trying to touch anything. She just has this look where she stares at him the entire time as he's leaving. I, just, I, to her thank credit, you very much. She tried so. Thank you. She was so deadpan. She's like, "It's okay. Don't worry about Don't it." Don't worry. I, about but she was like clearly like mumbling under her breath, like oh, I hate yeah. this guy. If you stay around for one more minute, hey, I so, might so tell me, possibly strangle you. Did how early did you go? It was like 10 in the morning. So you started her day. Awesome. It was like awesome. 10, 10, 30. She's, She's like, I only have seven more hours. So, in this. <laughs> so I'm like, I like get out of that second of the office and I just start walking. I just start walking. Book I, it outside. Book it to the elevator. I hit the button and I get in the elevator and this sweet old lady looks down at my shoes and she goes, oh, those look very comfortable. Are those slippers? And I said, 
no, they're Crocs. And she goes, <laughs> oh, because a lot of people wear, you know, slippers to the doctor. And she's like a little old lady. She's what? like, those are Crocs? Those are shoes? I said, yeah, they're, they're Crocs. She's like, I'm going to have to look into those. <gasps> so there you go. My story does tie back to Crocs in one way, shape, or form. Because that did happen after I smashed a bunch of... Oh, I felt oh, so man. bad. Wow. So that started my morning, too. That was uh, eventful. Yeah. That is... That's kind of like almost horrifying because your feet, there's no recovery. And I'm wearing, mentally. and I'm like, wearing, I don't know what to do here. I'm wearing the, I, I have a black um, school coat. So it has the big logo of our oh, school on the back. No. Did you slowly start and turning it, says, it inside out? It no. says Sensei Dave across the front. Oh, no. And I'm like, boom, like it's a cape. I'm Batman. I just knocked down all the vials. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. You really took out those vials, Batman. It was, um, it was, I've never felt less graceful in my life. You slowly take the sweater off and just like tuck it under your shirt. You're just like walking out. Uh, and like, what do you do? Am I supposed to bend over and help pick them up? Like, I'm like, I uh, mean, um, that'd be uh, your first instinct, but they're vials of blood. You really shouldn't. The first thing I did was scan first. to see if any of them broke that, yeah, or obviously. mixed together. I don't I'm surprised none of them did. Oh, man. That imagine even imagine worse. some of the samples got contaminated. Oh. Like, Somebody's oh, oh, your cholesterol's no. through the roof because the blood got mixed in or like No, what would have been funnier if Dave broke his own vial and then she's like, Well, I guess we'll do this again in the other arm. But what I was telling you <laughs> it's not as Oops, delightful. Yeah, exactly. the Only <laughs> six or seven, but we were almost there. So I was telling Kelsey the story and she's Oops, like I missed. She's like she didn't quite get it at first. So she's like, um she's like, Oh, okay, but so but your blood your your vials are okay. I was like, No, you don't understand. My vials were in her hand. I knocked over everybody else's vials. I'm gold. I just ruined I don't everybody know, else's day. Other, imagine making phone calls. Like if I if they did break, like we're gonna need you to come in and do more blood work because oh some my idiot God. Oh my knocked God. over the vials. Yeah, that's lucky. Oh man, I, right I, I scanned and I was like, okay, it doesn't look like anything's broken. I'm Sorry, gonna bang out there. Next lesson is coat application. <laughs> <laughs> How to <laughs> properly put on your coat while wearing Crocs. That's how I know I'm still like a kid at almost at almost forty because I swung, swung I, your you know, coat I just around. Didn't even think about it. I just... <laughs> the big dramatic superhero throw of the cape <laughs> over. You know, in my defense, because there is a defense here. Is there? None. The vials of blood were sitting on top of this mini fridge that was right there, which I'm sure is to hold, you know, keep the blood cold or whatever. But they were just sitting on top, kind of precariously on the side, on like the front edge, like. I'm sure there was now a warning. Please keep without outside of Cape range. <laughs> yeah, well, I, only, case you I only go like with... once a year just for that one checkup. So oh, no. I'm hoping next Imagine year. Imagine a whole year later. It uh, is the same so woman. Imagine see... they flag me. It's going to be in my like, chart. Oh, so this guy. This like, guy can't. Oh, no. it's, mm -mm. it's the vile guy. <laughs> cape hazard. Yeah, cape hazard. <laughs> Sarah, we're going to need you to leave your coat outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, am I getting weighed? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. It's just, but, a, you know, the, you know. But as bad as I felt, that little old lady complimented my Crocs. There you go. Yeah, you got uh, something. Which, which um, Melinda, our friend Melinda, Ian's wife, our, our video editor friend. Shout out to you, Melinda. Yep. She calls them lumberjack Crocs, which I don't, I don't, Ooh, I don't quite see. This particular see. pair? Yeah. I, I can mean, they're fur lined and they got the red yeah, and the gray. They look like and the they're black. like the, the plaid shirts that yeah, you know, see so. lumberjacks wearing. But yeah. some sweet old lady complimented me on them. So oh, nice. I didn't feel like. So much of a jerk after that. Nicer than her creepily leaning over and taking pictures of it. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Like the one girl on the plane. Jeez. So how was your morning, guys? <laughs> <laughs> My morning oh. went just fine, actually. Nice and relaxed. We went to go see this uh, right before we met. I met you now. Mm -hmm. We went to go see uh, Luca's drum teacher play at like a live Christian band event. Which oh, was really kind of oh. cool. Was he in Crocs? And he might have been. I didn't pay attention. Because uh, he was behind the drum set. Right, right, So right. you couldn't really Obviously. tell. We'll just say for the purpose of the story, he was in Crocs. Continue. It was definitely with him, yeah. without a doubt in Crocs. Um, but it was neat to watch him play and use the technique that he's teaching to Luca. So Luca hmm. was able to kind of put together in a live environment. So Luca, by he, the way, is his son. Oh, yeah. Also, I think we mentioned him before. Also co-host of Talking with Sharks. Oh, Just Talking Sharks. Just Talking just, Sharks. Just talking oh, sharks. Oh, thank you for the show. So I'll give you a little um, plug. Luca owns that, uh, runs that YouTube channel with Vincenzo the Shark, who might be voiced by someone that we know. I don't know who, but someone. Not someone clue. that we know. Not a clue. Someone overly attractive, I'm sure. But anyway, um, what's, in, what's important to, to keep in mind here is that it was nice for Luca to tie in 
his lessons with application, right? So the drum teacher was using you know different techniques, and Luca was calling them out. Like he'd lean over and be like, "Oh, that's a you know roll," and he's using oh, a hi hat nice. and he's playing on the you know a triplet. And I'm just like, "Oh, that's great, buddy. <laughs> that's I, great, dude. That's, that's good though because really I, I feel like all. that happens sometimes. Like like not our school because we we all still train and stay active, but a lot of martial arts schools you'll see like the instructors don't train anymore or they don't. So you never get to yeah. see what it's supposed to look like or right. they don't they demonstrate have like it. The students demonstrate it or something, yeah. Right, which is it's important to see like the people that are considered the high level to show like, no, this is this is what it is. And it is made up of basics. And this is how you put it together. And, you know, it, it's interesting because we definitely actively train as we're teaching. But one thing we don't do is, is, is a group things together in front of the students, right? So what I mean by that is, you know, it was a couple, it was like two or three months ago, I had Alex and I just did, you know, a kata together and the lesson was staying together staying with together. other people yeah. in your group. So I said, once you've got the rhythm down, the motions down, the stances down, it should be very easy for you to call any of your friends into a room and just knock out a good kata and have fun with it together. Yeah. And then I said, Hey, you know, Master Alex, you wanna you wanna show him right now? And we jumped right into katas that they were working on. And, you know, they really enjoyed not only seeing their instructors do the kata, but seeing how quickly it synced yeah, up it's, together. Yeah, I think it's always good to see oh, yeah. to see the, the people that are teaching you do their thing. Um, me, me and Mike have done that before, too. Yeah, like when he used to work on Saturdays, we would do it, too. Just so that they can see it, because they have to see it. It's better when you see it, you can learn it a lot easier, because you know what it's supposed to look like. That's absolutely. why when we're teaching, we always have, you know, the demonstrate detail and then drill and, it. And it's always great, too, because... Um, they just respect you more too when they see what you can do. Oh yeah, because it's, it's an oh, immediate oh, like, oh, just that good. I mean, obviously, you know, they still respect us because we're teaching them how to do it. But when that you actually see your instructor before the move, like one hundred percent, even better. Which is speaking of constantly training and staying in shape, we are going to a seminar tomorrow. I'm so excited. Tell them who's running it. Who's running the seminar? Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. To those of you who don't know who that is, he is probably one of the best. Mixed martial arts fighters in history. Uh, Am I he's accurate he's in definitely that? he's in the conversation for the goat, greatest, yeah, of, the all greatest time. of all time. He's, Every single time. I think he still holds the record for most title defenses in the UFC. Right? He defended his title the most I, in the UFC. I think so. And then he then he's in one one FC now. Yeah, one fighting championship. He's in the one fighting championship, and uh, so he won the title. Then he loses the title. Then he comes back and avenges his loss. Almost the same way he lost the title, which was amazing. And when he lost, it was decision, right? Wasn't it decision? No, he got knocked no. out with a knee. Yeah, he got knocked uh, out he, with a knee. But then, like he's about to say, when he came back to avenge that loss against the same guy, he, he knocked him out he, with a knee. He lost in the UFC on a controversial decision. That's what I was yeah, referencing. So, and that was his last that's fight in the UFC. I mean, I, I, we watched that fight. I watched that fight. I thought yeah. he won. But it was could, close. You can make a case. There, there's close. the there's the constant argument of like if you're fighting the champion, it needs to be a decisive win. But then there's also that was the controversial yeah. side of it. It wasn't really a decisive win. Yeah. But like he's saying, it was there close. Was an argument it was against Henry Cejudo. It. It, it was close. But um, and then he, then he goes and wins this title, and then he loses it, and then he wins it again. Um, his last fight, he won it, and the guy's a beast, and he's a true martial artist. Like he's humble, he's kind, he's, funniest guy I've ever. He's like, into video seen. games, and he's um, our he's our weight class. Yeah, so he's a little dude. He's like literally us. ours. Yeah, our size. And this is gonna be the first seminar I think in a while that I haven't gone with you. Yeah, you usually come get, with us. Yeah, I love going to these. Somebody seminars. needs to work. Uh, yeah, someone's well, going no, to but what, what I like, keep that school going. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, here's here's the funny thing. Uh, I think that any a, a lot of folks forget when you're teaching, when you're leading, how important it is to still step out and go to these seminars and learn from other people and kind of building out and even reaffirming what you're good at and what you want to get better at. That then you bring that back to the school. I think it's cool. Oh it's yeah, I can't wait. I, I mean, we could we we couldn't pass up an opportunity to to, no. meet, to meet him. This Train is once, once in a lifetime. And then get once a, in a lifetime. Get a picture or two. I never in like if you had told me a year ago that I would have the chance to train with them, I, I was I would be like, What? It's Wait, gonna, what? It's gonna be neat. I'm looking once forward in a to lifetime. it. And then uh I'm glad we're going like a group of four. So there's gonna be like four of us going so that everybody has a partner to work with. Because sometimes you go to seminars and like if you go by yourself, we've gone to a couple where where we didn't work together. Um it's nice to bring. It's nice to work with new people. Don't get me wrong. Make friends. Get out there. Meet people. But also, uh, you meet some weirdos. And it's nice to have at least one buddy where you're like, okay, I know I can work with you. I know 
how you work. I know you actually care about learning, and you're gonna you're gonna push me. I'll push you, but you're not gonna hurt me. Because sometimes you get to these things and you don't know. Some people go too hard. Some people go out to prove something. Some people don't know how to wash their uniforms or, or <laughs> equipment. Uh, I don't know what's worse: someone coming in with little experience and they're trying to prove something they don't need to prove, or someone that just has bo. And I'm saying that right to the camera. Please don't go to a seminar or to a class and not smell like daisies at that point. By the end of the class, it's different because you're putting all oh, your yeah. work in. Oh, yeah, if you're sweating while you're working. At least it on the way in because there's nothing worse than either being or working with that person I'm, that's already defending you <laughs> with their, their I'm wondering if I can get DJ to sign a... Sign a, a pair, pair of Crocs, Crocs or well, something. Maybe. Or like, hey, would you slide this Croc on it? Just throw a kick real quick? Well, uh, we have to at least ask. I mean, I'm, I plan on wearing our kicking and Crocs like... Oh, like the shirt? I'm going to have the shirt with oh, me. Okay, oh, okay, I'll wear mine too. Which color are you going to wear? So I, I have it decided. Uh, okay, well, you got, yeah, let me know which one you you're going to wear. You know what you guys do. Get an address where you can send him something. Just thank you so much for the seminar. We appreciate you. Just wanted you to have true. something. I'm sure well, I mean, he's, he's got something big on, like that online. He's big right? on YouTube and Twitch. And yeah, like, this guy has got to have a P.O. box or something. If he does nothing at all, he remembers you guys for a future seminar. Oh, for real? All I know is I'm going to bring a pair of Crocs and like... You could, you, you could just slide these on real quick, throw a kick for picture for us real you, quick. You could have like, them. We could even like forego, uh, no, not, we could, I mean, I guess we could hop in there too. Because we could, we'll have people there that could take the picture for us. Yeah, okay. I'm going to. I just want to, I'm just going to say, <laughs> either which way. I don't know what size shoe he is. Maybe he'll fit. I mean, he's a small guy. I don't well, know. At the end of the day, oh, if, for, I mean, if for certain reasons he can't, right? Legally, he might have a PR team or whatever it may be. We have no idea. No but, point. but you guys say, hey, would you have an email address or a PO box? Somewhere where I can just send you something. Thank you. Obviously, we're, we're, we're covering the seminar, but you know, in addition to appreciating the It's going to be cool either way. I'm just, I'm just excited to so cool. steal whatever it, knowledge I, I can. You know, mm -hmm. Listen, working with any top level athletes, like that's the way to go. If you're going to go to a seminar of any kind, whether it be a business seminar, a religious seminar, motivational, or in this case, a martial arts seminar, you always want to go with someone that's going to elevate your game. And the fact that they're weight, he's right in your weight class or our weight class, that's that's cool. Yeah, and my now my now fat weight class according, no, you're, to, according to your doctor. According to my doctor. <laughs> Dave's now moved to super heavyweight, so actually no. I mean, he was flyweight, right? Was he still flyweight I, in one FC? Um I think he's in the one forties, one thirty five, maybe. Well, I because they do the hydration FC, test in one FC. Yeah. So everybody kinda moves up one weight class. Yeah, because they don't they don't make you go through that rigorous weight cutting. Right. I mean I I've watched the clips of his fights from one FC, but like it's it's hard sometimes to like watch things that like aren't the UFC. Just harder to find it, harder to get it. Um I've watched yeah. like karate combat. I've watched that a couple times. And I've, I've seen really some cool. one FCs. That was really uh, cool karate combat watching. Yeah, it was now, when he messaged me saying there was a pay per view on that night and that one Well, it's, it's not even pay per view. They're all free. Oh, that's right. They're all free. That's the that's one right. where the they're actually they, like it's a, it's like a laid down octagon of mass. Yeah, he, he, correct. Yeah, yeah and okay. it's and it, they're all karate fighters. They're all yeah. karateka. And um, so one there's the boy no, was a sensei. GSP. Right. They actually oh. do a big storyline. It's weird because they like write a storyline for the season, but then they're real fights. So the storyline follows the senseis. But then the fights have nothing to do with the storyline, really. And um, it's pretty neat. But, like, the rules are cool because it's you, – you, you can do a takedown, but you only get, like, three seconds of ground and pound or something like that. Like You, you literally hear someone over the – five, right. four, three, stand them right two, up. one, at one, the ref is standing Right. Up. There's no real grappling in it because it is – they're all karate – now, do they, do they give them the countdown for when they're, like, laying on one of the sidewalls? So I've seen some short videos where they're actually, like, they're getting attacked. They'll lay back on the sidewall. And they Not get, really. I think on the Whatever. wall, they just let them go. Yeah, I think they yeah. just let them go. I think it's mm. only for when they're on, like, the ground. But it's, it's okay. good because it gives, like, like karate karate folk, like, um, karateka. Like us. Uh, a place to go that's just not. It's not like you have to get into MMA. I mean, it helps to know, yeah, but like you have a lot taekwondo, of taekwondo, but it's not MMA. But you have a lot of guys that karate. that move from point fighting to to karate combat, or they came from like the the W uh, WKF, the you know World Karate Federation, into into that realm. So you don't have to have the full groundwork skill set if you don't know it. Mm -hmm. Just enough to get back up. You have to know enough to like how to cover and how to get back up. But you don't, I mean, you don't need the extensive knowledge of passing guards and how do I get out of this and what do I do when caught in this position and you're not worried about submissions at all. There's no submissions. So you don't, okay. you don't have Is to know. Is there head contact? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's full contact. Yeah, I didn't watch full matches. I just saw some like. It's full matches. contact. Yeah. You just no submission fighting. And gloves, feet pads? No, just gloves. I don't. Was there foot pads? I forget. I don't think there no was. No foot pads. They, they wear those gloves. They wear gloves, karate pants. They, I they saw wear that. gee pants with and a belt. belts. With oh. the belt. Uh huh. And he lost with belts. <laughs> with I can belts. hear again. Oh. So, it's pretty cool. That is cool. I believe um I've knocked over some of the those fighters' vials of blood too. No, I was gonna say, <laughs> some of the, you may have helped imagine, some of them out. Yeah, imagine. Oh, I don't man. know how he made it in. But There's no do, way that was clean. But yeah. they do the um, the one FC where where the seminar we're going to tomorrow, where where De, uh, Demetrius Johnson fights. They do hydration tests, so the weight cuts a little different, so they don't have to cut as much weight. They test to see your, your hydration levels. So I think that's pretty cool too. Yeah, do they want them at a certain level, like a certain like like they don't right. want you, they don't want you to they don't want dehydrate. you they don't want you yeah. cutting massive amounts of weight to step in, which is a big strategy. So that makes so, sense from a health perspective for the fighters. It's great. It's better, way better for health now. perspective, and from the fact that some of those guys in the UFC they cut a large amount of oh, weight, yeah. and meanwhile their opponent might only cut. Like a couple pounds or something like that. But that's yeah. a real traditional so when, like wrestling move too. Yeah, right. you're right. And then when they are ready to fight and they've rehydrated and they've they're they're back to their normal walking around weight, now they're some of those fighters can be way there heavier is, than the guy they're actually there fighting. There's there one coach talking about just because they I, weigh in at a certain weight doesn't mean they're fighting at that weight. I, there was one coach talking about it, and I I can't remember who said it and where, where I heard it, but he was talking about. They all do it. So he's like, you think you get an advantage, but you're not getting an advantage because everybody's cutting weight. And you diminish yourself so much when you're cutting that weight that, like, your energy levels aren't exactly... Even when you yeah. rehydrate, you're not... You're Even, not where like, you're... just from watching that one video on one, um, Wonder, Boy's Wonder Boy's channel, channel, when Sweet Tea, when Tony, his Wonder Boy's brother... Um, went through a UFC weight cut. Yeah, just just to see, just for fun, you know. Especially because they're professionals and they were able to do that. Right, his dad's put his yeah. his dad is his coach, and he's put you know Wonder Boy through the same weight cut. So, and it was really interesting to see what he had to to go through to do that. It looked miserable. It looked. I mean, terrible. the only thing I would I would have liked a little bit more in the video of like him rehydrating after that. Yeah, but he was they like stopped. Shocked. They stopped right after he weighed in. He that definitely was, was like, I don't want to do this anymore. As you know, yeah. a lot of them after the weigh in try to. As much as they can, we hydrate. Oh, they rehydrate and, and as much as humanly I can, possible. I, I it's almost like a seven to eight pound swing between the weigh-in exactly. and the fight. So the second time I competed in a Naga tournament, like a grappling tournament, um, they let you weigh in either the, the morning, the day before or the morning of. So at the time, I was a bantamweight. That was before my doctor told me I'm getting chubby. Uh, <laughs> can you tell him? One I'm, extra donut. Can you tell I'm dwelling Magnet. on it? Um, no, not at all. Oh, I'm going to train so hard starting next week. <laughs> and I, I blame the water. I blame all the water I've been drinking. But anyway. I, I told him he caught up to me. <laughs> oh, oh, what, really? Weight-wise? Or weight-wise, yeah, he caught up to me. <sighs> I'm probably still the heavyweight then. The doctor, <laughs> are, you still, are you still working out too? It's like every day. I ran a marathon two day, two weeks ago. Come on, man. But um, anyway, Back to the original story. Back to the original story. I'm dwelling. Uh, my feelings are hurt. Um. So the first time I competed, the second time I competed in Naga, you, I chose to weigh in the day of. So I was, I was what they called in Naga a bantamweight, which was for them is 129.9 and under. So a lot of people came from the 135s, weighed in the night before, and then bulked themselves back up. So I walk up, I get on the scale. Uh, everybody's stripping down when they get on the scale too. I get on the scale, sweatpants, hoodie. Didn't change anything. Shoes still on, right? Shoes. You said shoes still on. <laughs> and I weighed in at 125. At the time, I was training, like, a lot. And uh, the guy goes, 125. Good luck. <laughs> you could, you're at the bottom of the weight class. They're like, oh. 125. Good, good luck. <laughs> That's exactly how he said well, it. Well, it's so funny, that four pounds, what a difference it makes when you're you it, know, it, into your I third mean, two-minute yeah. round. Yeah. And you're just like, it why does. do you feel like you're 50 pounds heavier and it's only four pounds? I mean, yeah. It does it like I, I lost to the guy that got first place, and so in other words, he came in second. No, I actually didn't come in second. Not, not the way, not earlier. the way it works. Anyways, but anyway, we'll just say that he came in second. I, I didn't do, but uh, make him feel better. I went the distance. I lost my two points, and then uh, I made a stupid decision where I should have won. But good. was it the cape move? It went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I the went cape. for a sweeping grab. I could just see Master Paul on the sideline, be like, uh, cape. Like, Master, cape. Paul, Master Paul was screaming at me because I, I I thought I had a Kimura and he's screaming hip bump because I could have bumped the guy over oh. and that would have been my points. I would have won. But you know when you're like competing and you're not 
Like I you're hear, in the moment, yeah. But we're four minutes and fifty seconds into this round. I don't hear anything. So I lost by like two points, and then full five minutes, and he's like, well, "Why didn't you just hip bump?" I was like, "I thought I could get the Kamori." He's like, "But I was telling you to do the hip bump. Why didn't you just?" I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I could but, do the Kamori. Well, you didn't. <laughs> but the guy definitely was not. 125. Like, I just look at him going, you're not, you're not 125. There's no way. He's like 5'10. Like, you're not 125. Get out of here. I was 125 in eighth grade. <laughs> were you 5'10 were you in eighth grade? <laughs> uh, five, I Are wish, you shrinking? I wish I was five. I've never, this is max height, my friend. <laughs> we made also it. Also, eighth grade. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> the one growth spurt, done. After that, we were done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, my, my cousin used to wrestle, and he would tell me a lot about it, and he was in the 170s, um, but his comfortable with weight was really like 189. Like, right. but he would go down to 170, and he definitely would feel it. And he was still naturally just very strong, but when you're at someone that was naturally in the 170s versus someone that's weight cutting, yeah. and that was also at equal like skill level, oh, yeah. that, that difference well, I mean, know, equal skill matter. Equal skill levels, uh, you got to go with size and point if you have equal skill level size means a lot I, that's why there's weight classes i mean i love i love the idea of like the little guy trouncing because i'm a little guy and it worked when you have different skill levels so if i know more okay but if we're equal skill levels and you outweigh by 40 pounds yeah let's, let's be a little realistic well that's yeah. the old 90s ufc you know pre-ufc right. UFC rules There's no rules you yeah. have a sumo wrestler and right. a Thai kickboxer just, or yeah. jiu-jitsu that, guy i'm not so gonna go, lie. I'll, I'll beat the sumo wrestler because that would he be has no skill terrible right. to doing. watch that would be a terrible well, we, to watch I, live i think that would be great to watch some of the old ones because it's to so go back and comedic. watch some of those. <laughs> it, it's, so it's comedic they were definitely different times oh wow it it looks like something out of um what is it no holes bars the whole colgan movie I think so. With like Zeus, where it's like they had no weight class. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. We did actually get a review though. Oh, sort of, kind of. Quickly pivoting, changing gears. Uh, sure, it yeah. just, it just hit me because, because Nick is Go. talking, and she com- <laughs> because Nick is talking, and she completely and he judges me. So we're going into that. <laughs> no, 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 because she completely left Nick out of the review. <laughs> so that's a sore spot. Right, right, right. So. I don't know. So we always tell them to leave written reviews. Can you not leave a written review on, I, on, on yeah. Spotify? So here's the thing. I want to I want to publicly apologize to the audience <laughs> for me ranting at them last week. So I did some research and I realized the only podcast platform that I, I think, I'm not sure if you can do it on Google or not, but Apple Podcasts is the only place you can leave a written review. You can only leave uh, star reviews on, on Spotify, which by the way, we do have only five star reviews, which is great. Thank you guys so much. But only five five star reviews. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's but, more than five. I but forget Steve, the exact number. I can look. You it up. can comment so, on YouTube. That's what I yes. was just about and, to say. And spend most of those comments on Nick. I'm just saying. And you can just also make positive. It feel better. Yeah, I need it. I can use the boost. If you want us to read stuff online, you can read the comments. But you can also send us an email. We, we that's you can also send us an email. We did put the email in. I, I, I can put it up on the screen again because last time I tried to spell it, I couldn't spell it. And we definitely want more submissions of people throwing kicks. But, yes. But anyway, we got a nice um, back to the review. So someone literally they they sent Master Dave directly. Yeah, they 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 Snapchatted me a former student. Um, who lives in Utah? I think Utah. Out in Utah. Out in Utah. On the mountain. Said we were hilarious. Said me and Steve are hilarious. No, nope, you have was... to read it. Ex- oh, you're right. Uh, it's you're on, on my phone. phone. Dag nabbing. Dag you sent nabbing. it to me. Great student. Excellent skier. Mad respect. But, Talk more about me next time. But yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you and Steve are hilarious. No mention of Nick. And then she got mad because I put her on blast. So now I'll put her on blast publicly. Um... We won't say her name, but, but I got a verbal I review won't say on the way Kristen's in. Name. <laughs> we yeah. will not. So say why Kristen's don't you talk about my here. verbal comments? <laughs> but then, that I got okay, she before did, I showed up, she did verbally include you, and then also she did on the Snapchat afterwards after we harassed. No, no, not her. Saying, but no, then, I, but I, then, Kristen. Mindy said Nick was her favorite part. Yes, of the podcast. then Melinda once again we mentioned before Ian's wife. Um, Said that Nick was her favorite part of the podcast. So you see, you got people. So you get some love. You get some love. All joking aside, I have thick skin. I'm great with it. But and I know did. you guys are doing a fantastic job. But she job. did also give us Super ideas proud. for uh, a couple of like, content things and things she like did. that. She did. She gave us some good ideas. Um, 
She also said she wanted to be a guest on the podcast. Yeah, we got some guests lined up. So we so got. So she, got a... she wanted us to zoom her in, and I'm saying that will be a lot more difficult than if you just come back and visit. That would be easier. I have some fun guest games we can play that we I'll have, share um, with you games. guys later. So, so I know, I know, we also have somebody in the fashion industry that um, wants we to be do. a guest. Also, a martial artist, former also friend, a former martial artist, a second and degree uh, martial artist, instructor, and a, a fashion designer who is also like. I can come in, I can quiz you guys in the history of Crocs, which immediately I was like, I don't know anything about the but history of Crocs. But now I have to study. I'm going <laughs> yeah, to We only know kicking and Croc her. history, not Crocs And history. then like fun facts. And so she knows a lot about like the fashion end of it. I thought the host was supposed to quiz the guests, not the other way around. I know. We're going to have to rethink this. I'm definitely... Uh, well, if each of us study a part of the history, we should cover enough we ground to get a 50 on the test. And then, <laughs> and then we do want to get the logo creator. He's just the most difficult guy to get to do anything. Oh, yeah, I'm saying it. I have public. to mention that part. <laughs> Actively busy individual. Very, very, very busy. Very involved. Very, so busy. So busy. Very yeah. busy. Does very it Very busy. Me. Unable to play a three-person video game that you overcommitted busy. to. <laughs> <laughs> Should we tell that story, too? We have, might as well. You mentioned it. You brought it up. Well, we, uh, we're we big fans of retro games, right? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that like retro games. When I say retro, I don't know. For Dave, retro is what? Two, I mean, for Steve, is what? Yeah, 2011. For we're uh, we're <laughs> but, pretty for those of us, uh, my, my you know, first game system for us was a GameCube. When, see, when 90s. people say that, I get so mad. But like, my the first Game system Cube. was a GameCube, and I'm like, GameCube is cutting edge technology. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you the talking N64 about? N64 was like HDMI. GameCube 4K. was the future. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, still when VHS was a thing. It was game. But, that uh, should be another thing we discuss on the podcast at some yeah. point. I, I know I'm completely cutting us off from this story, but I'll make it quick. We could discuss uh, our favorite games from our childhoods. Oh, definitely. And we should do like a low budget stream where I just point the camera at the screen while we play. I'm yeah. saying it. Is there Low, it? Lower budget already? Uh, yeah. Like, even lower. Like no tech. Even lower. Even budget. lower. Pointing. Got it. Camera at the screen. So anyway, you're playing a game called Battletoads. Yeah, Battletoads. So for any of those of you that played games in from the Genesis system back in the day, Battletoads is one of those games. And in the newer revamped version, I say newer, it's already about two years old. Um, it is three player co op, really fun games. So the individual that we that made the logo had started the game with my David yep. and myself. And we had a great time. I we yep. spent too much time playing that game. And Indeed. it's very difficult, by the way. Uh, we had some fun. Yep. Um, but then we're, th what did you and he both say to me as far as your commitment to the game? I don't remember. What did, what did we yeah, say? They both look at me and they're like, it's on you now, Nick. We want to play again and we're going to beat this game. And I'm like, okay. And this I, is, this I is a set the second game. You chime in. And <laughs> this is, this is a public reveal though. So we actually started a new game with Steve because we couldn't, we couldn't get a hold Sorry, of Sorry, Caravelle. I will oh, neither confirm mad. nor deny that fact. <laughs> but we are open to play with you too. Just so you know. Oh, um, you know who else was a little upset that we didn't include him in the Battletoads uh, this, um, playing? <laughs> Andrew. Andrew? Andrew. Andrew. Andrew was a little upset when I told him that. So the the one time that we were off and um, we didn't play cart, right? It was the one Tuesday night that we didn't do cart night. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Andrew was actually saying like, oh, if you guys are going to play cart, I'll be actually be able to play because we were off. Uh... And then we ended up not playing cart. So... Uh, that uh, he asked me what uh, you know what happened. I guess you guys didn't play cart the you know the one Tuesday night, huh? And I said no, 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 it just didn't pan out. Everybody else was busy, so we ended up just going over to Nick's house and playing Battletoads. And he was like, "What? I would have wanted to play Battletoads. Uh, I grew up on Battletoads. That's true. Man. That's true. That's true. We'll get so, we'll get you in. We're gonna get him sorry. in as a guest too. We're gonna get oh, him he, in as a guest. He, he doesn't listen to this podcast. And I think we have to go back. to He doesn't like, have to listen to be a guest though. We can get him in as a guest. True. There. So I found out today. Um, and I don't know if I'm supposed to know this, but I found out today that there is a group chat called Kicking and Crocs started what? by. So so our our guest from last episode, Lauren, spilled the beans. Wait, what? Yeah. So like some Who of some it, of your Lauren? students. Wait, what? No, Lauren's not involved. There's some of your students. Um, what is involved this? Involved in this group about. chat, and then it's a coup. And then I think there's a female instructor at your school involved in it. Um, <gasps> if you could put two and two together on that. Wait one. a minute. So what is this group chat regarding? Like, what is this? Is I this don't know. Kicking about what? Control being I don't lost. Know. As we're talking. About what? I don't know. Kick it, I'm getting kicking and crowds. I, I guess. would hope so it's about just you, you two and how deeper. great you guys are. We Obviously, gotta, wait, I wait, 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 wait. Oh no, you're you're back up. Yeah. I don't want to be so, involved. I'm certain... only point zero zero one percent phantom <laughs> ownership. <laughs> what are we gonna do 
when you get your pair of Crocs? We're going to start saying, oh, hey, oh. Steve, one third of kicking a Croc. <laughs> no, I'll have to. No, 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 not even. No, I have to be like, I, I still, I, I will come up with a good time. Uh, well, yeah, just come up with something. Whenever you're on the show, just wear one Croc. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just so you. Anyways, yeah, so, so wait, back the bus up a second. So this certain female instructor that's at our school, I'll, we'll keep her nameless for now, has started, like she's the one that no, started it? No, she didn't it? start it. There's, so there's, who started this? Um, I don't know if I should say. I think you should. Because um, this is going on on my turf there's, here. There's, there's a, a Sophia involved, and I'm not going to say last names. Don't have to say last names. But yeah, so apparently you know, people want to be guests. We have a, a string of people that want to be guests. Here. So wait, maybe is, this this group is just people talking nicely about what you're doing and that's looking okay. for strategies to be on. It's a compliment. Yeah, I certainly I hope that's all that we this could, is. We could have I'm some guests I'm sure it is. And then Lauren, like, she, she finished. She's like, can I be a guest again? That was fun. Like, hey, give some other people a chance for a second. And then, then we have line. to trade our cup from special guest to just guest. Oh, that's right. It's true, oh, though. that's true. When we do have her on, though, she gets a cup, so she she's a special guest. Well, she has it. She, she has, has to bring it. She no, I'm saying it. she's she'll. Oh, she has to bring it with her. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, she's yeah. she's maybe we'll have her on like once. I don't. I need to once every deeper. other month. I need to yeah. dig deeper about I, this. I definitely want to spend an episode on my top couch co-op games. Couch, couch co-ops. co-ops. Couch yeah. Yeah. Definitely, we can do that. We can literally just have like a whole ge- uh, episode about video games, our favorite it, ones from. Because I want to tell you, well, we can separate it. But I, we had I had Rob had visited uh, a couple days ago or a week ago week ago. And we did some Boomerang Foo. That's a great game. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. So that's one of my current favorite couch co-op games. Boomerang Foo. And I promise, Most likely because they don't allow any other I, I, I promise you there are there is more martial arts content coming in future videos. It's, yeah, we'll it's make Boomerang it happen. Foo. But, uh, it's martial arts. No, no, no. I just mean in general. Kind of. I mean. In general, the there's foo, more. The Foo part. <laughs> well, we have the great Nunchuck, the fun challenge that was up for a great cause. Did, did you right. just say we had the numb really Nunchucks. Numb. 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 Did I say numb? Sorry. You numb. numb. Numbs. I can't numbs. feel these chucks. Uh, <laughs> why am I They're so numb? numb. Exactly. That would and be then, a great weapon, though, if you like hit them with the chuck and, and they, they go, go numb. I mean, if you hit them in well, the funny bone. Successful. You don't need a funny bone shot with the numb chuck for you to be you numb. <laughs> Numb Chuck. I think <laughs> I call them that. It's because my strikes cause you to be numb. But, but so speaking of video yeah, games, we'll go with that. we know a guy that got his degree in like video game creation. Maybe we can make us like a, a kick it in Crocs video game, but we can't use Crocs, obviously, because that's trademarked. Yeah, so we'll mean, have to call something else. Kicking in really cool rubber shoes. <laughs> oh, God. I, I think I think he could maybe he can make that happen. I, I, even if it's super it simple. It would just like, be our like, guy. And it, it might just be, yeah. Kicking people. Yeah, and yeah, I like that. Just be like kicking people. And instead of getting like a, instead of like a firefly plant, uh, a fire flower plant, he can throw his clock. He can actually kick it off. That's his distance move. I mean, that could be the long range attack. Like my brother in law. Like like your brother. Kicking with with cracks. cracks. Flicking (laughs) flicking with cracks. Uh, We have to edit that in somewhere. uh, We'll we'll, Uh, we'll we'll make it happen. So yeah. Activate comfort mode. (laughs) And so good, man. So good. So good. Uh, well, so good. that's all I yeah, got today. That's, that, that, was, that was good. That was good. But I now need to dig deeper. You dig deeper. And I, I, I do promise. I do want to do a couple more martial arts videos in the future. Like, wait, one more time. How, how, I'm that. sorry. I'm stuck on this group chat thing. Yeah, how, yeah, did, yeah. how did you figure out about this again? Who told you about this? Lauren told me about it. How did she figure out about it? Like, I think they told her. I, really? And who was the other person? You it said? was her roommate's cousin's best friend's sister. Uh, uh, yeah, I got you. I'll dig deeper yeah. about it. I'll you figure dig, out more you about dig it. Deeper. I'll, I'll dig deeper about dig this. Dig deeper. Dig deeper. I will find out who started I this. I think you should just let it be what, what it is. is. Allow, Allow it to it grow oh, and yeah. surprise us. I think I'll we should, let it be I, what it is. I think we should sue for copyright infringement of the but, thing that we're copyrighting. Dang it. Infringing. I was about to say that. I was like, I would. I just want to figure out, like, you know, the full story so that when I sue, I have enough, you know. We want to sue for the copyright infringement of the thing that we're infringing on the copyright. We are. Not Crocs affiliated. We are Crocs fans. This we is are right. M- we are super fans. Very much Once so again, fans. we are not affiliated with the Crocs. And kicking fans. I we mean, not affiliated with it. Fans. Not affiliated with it, but Yet. we do advocate for it. You should definitely go and get yourself a pair of Crocs. As a successful right? brand. Exactly. Yes. Well... Oh, well. That, well, that was that was very good. That was very good. Well, anyways, here we go. So if you have not followed us yet on Instagram or the TikTok, you can follow us at Kicking in Crocs. K I C K I N dot in dot Crocs C R O C S. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. We come out, like we just said before. We got a lot of cool content planned. So keep on the lookout for that. And uh, make sure you guys give us those five star reviews on this podcast. It really helps us out. And uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can leave us a, a written review. 
Everybody else, go ahead on over to the YouTube page. Give us some comments. We'll be happy to read those on the next podcast episode. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, every time we spell out kicking and Crocs, I keep thinking you do K I S S I N G. Like <laughs> K I S S I N G. K I S S I N G. I should do that one time just out of Kick nowhere. Kick it in a tree. <laughs> Kick it in a tree. <laughs> Anyways, I've been Steve. Love it. <laughs> I was, is, and always am, Dave. I don't even remember how I say it. Anymore. Are you anymore? Are you Dave now? I, yeah. Are you I, the same Dave? Are you same, sure? Same. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've seen some dark things. Files of blood all over. The I was about to say, are you the I'm same? I'm a changed man. <laughs> and I'm positive comments, Nick. Hey. And you stay kicking, internet. <laughs>